The US has a huge problem and millions of Americans are just done. How's that for the start of the show? Now it's no surprise that we're in trouble times. I mean, how much more are you having to pay for food nowadays? Gas, electricity, and I know a handful of people that are just struggling to make ends meet, but 2024 is supposedly the time when things are supposed to be going our way. Where we see prices drop in Walmart, Target, and all these big retailers, right? Where gas becomes more affordable, where the Federal Reserve will actually cut rates instead of raising them. Well, that's what they said last year, but has that changed for this year? Well, the release minutes are, how do I call it, conflicting. Officials at the meeting recognize that the rates are at its peak. They also recognize that the current policy is restrictive, not just towards inflation and, but also towards the economy. But some also saw the need to keep a restrictive policy until recession is well under the Fed's 2% range. The minutes indicated that the Fed still thinks that inflation risks persist and it also indicated a rate cut could only take place in the late 2024 and not earlier. And the Fed on its part has not declared victory over inflation yet. Currently inflation is well under 3% after re reaching record highs in 2022. The minutes showed that officials wanted, they rather want to see a consistent fall in inflation before the Fed could begin with the cycle of rate cuts in late 2024. The Fed's cautious approach towards rate cuts is a dampener for, is dampener rather for the markets. The U.S. markets anticipate rate cuts to begin from the spring of 2024, but the latest revelations have curbed the optimism, at least for now. So are they or aren't they? Well, if we go by the minutes, they're waiting for inflation to come down. And while sure, you know, it has slowed down a little bit, it's hard to believe that it's below 3% at the moment. But hey, I got a lot of you guys here in the community that keep it 100. So you guys tell me, do you feel as if inflation is now within the striking distance of that 2% that the Federal Reserve wants? Comment a simple yes or no on that one in the comments, depending upon your experience with the economy. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote there's a link in the description down below it takes about 10 seconds so guys shifting gears here just for a second but not really switching lanes let's talk about employment for a second all right so 2023 was the year for layoffs i mean there wasn't a single week where i wouldn't see a headline or two that talked about people being laid off or let go or you know or at least plans of letting people go and no company was safe especially in tech where we saw more than 250,000 workers losing their jobs from the likes of amazon meta google and even microsoft so this 2024 though we're seeing the trend alive and kicking new details about job cuts coming for xerox the company made that announcement just this morning as it details a new operating model and organizational structure for the future. This plan targets a 15% workforce reduction. It's unclear how many of those affected jobs will be here locally. The CEO says the restructuring is focused on the core print business, global business services, and IT and digital. Xerox says the looming cuts are subject to consultation with local works councils as well as employee representative bodies, adding it remains committed to providing transition support for the employees who will be affected. 15% of their workforce means that 3,000 employees are now set to be cut from their jobs. How's that for a welcome to the new year, right? So economists are also warning about how workers who were cut off in 2023 aren't in the best mindset and how it could linger into the next year. Huh, you think? I mean, just think of morale, like especially if you were left behind as thousands of your peers were let go. Even if you didn't lose your job, you might be feeling a little bit uncomfortable seeing all these people walking out the door. And you already know that these people are feeling a little bit anxious when it comes to job security. You know what I'm saying? Do you have any job security issues at your place? Oh, and those that were let go, they are for sure second guessing if they should apply under the same field or if they should look at other options where they have skills or heck, maybe even just start their own business. Oh wait, that last part might not be the best idea for everybody. I mean, we are seeing a lot of businesses close up shop, even those that have been around forever. You know what I mean? Some are dependent on the economy while others, others have a different situation. Longtime customers of LA famous sweet lady Jane Bakery, which has been in business for 35 years, stunned all six locations closed permanently on the final day of 2023, capping off another difficult year for L.A. eateries. Kind of shocked and upset, you know, a little upset. I mean, obviously they could do what they want, but it's like a big loss. In a statement, sweet lady Jane said in part, we did not come to this decision lightly nor quickly. 
While the support and loyalty of our customers has been strong, sales are not enough to continue doing business in the state of California, allowing us to service our lease obligations and pay our treasured employees a living wage without passing those costs directly onto you. They were fabulous, very expensive, but you know, that's why when they say they have to raise prices, I mean, the prices were already really high, really high like $60 for a cake, but I'm telling you it was almost worth it. It was worth it. Some think it's the wage increases in California that's really hitting businesses, but since this is a bakery and if there are bakers in the community, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but the struggle is most probably a mix of that plus inflation with the cost of ingredients nowadays and every other thing that goes into the overhead of running a business, right? And that's why bakeries like this one, no matter how long they've been in business, have had to call it quits. Now, speaking of calling it quits, it looks like a few people may be losing interest in the electric cars or electric vehicles because of their, I don't know, how do I call it? Tendency for spontaneous combustion and explosion. A scary incident on the TTC from New Year's Eve has fire officials raising caution. A fire inside a subway car at the Young Shepherd Station creating concern over lithium ion batteries. The fire resulted from the failure of a lithium ion battery pack that provided the power source to an e-bike. The operator of the bike was sent to hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. As can be seen from this video, the fire escalated rapidly and Chief Pegg says fires from lithium ion battery powered devices are a growing concern. So this happened in Toronto, but you and I already know that we've seen EVs burst into flames right here in our country. And it took hours to get the flames to go down. Two electric vehicles caught on fire after the storm. And yeah, now one local fire department is warning owners to park 50 feet away from any structure. Our Jackie Calloway shares what you need to know if you have an electric car or are in the market for a used vehicle. In just the last two days, two Teslas, one in Pinellas Park and another in Palm Harbor, caught fire after the storm surge pushed a wall of salt water inland. Carfax says owners need to understand the fire risk doesn't go away after their EV dries out. The salt water that is flooding can get into the battery and dry there. And once it dries, it creates what federal safety officials call bridges between cells. And that can lead to fires and that those fires can come anywhere from days to weeks later. And once an EV catches on fire, it is incredibly difficult to put it out. If the water breached the car door, it's important that you park it 50 feet away from any structure and take it in for service. And if you plan to purchase an EV or any vehicle, look for telltale signs of water damage. Hundreds of thousands of flooded cars are expected to be resold, according to Carfax. If there's a mildewy smell, if there is moisture in the car, that's a, a telltale sign. Look for mud and silt. Look for it in the glove box. Look for it under the hood of the car, but at high places. Now, e-bikes are growing in popularity in many different countries, but it's just kind of scary to think that somebody could be walking into a train and, well, what would have happened if that thing would have just actually just burst into flames during transit? I don't even want to imagine that, but, you know, we're probably gonna be seeing more and more of these problems since these things continue to be sold as safe vehicles. And they're all green and friendly, right? Just gotta wonder if all that smoke was good for the environment, you know what I mean? When these things burst into flames, that smoke can't be healthy. But what are your thoughts on today's topics, guys? Make sure you share them down below in the comments. And before I go, wanna thank you guys for hanging out and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.